Let us stand and sing together hymn 587. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. and everlasting God. You are always more ready to hear us than we are to pray and to give us more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us, we pray, the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. 
Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to hear the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of the Holy Scripture. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field, every bird of the air, and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading together Psalm 8. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your, your heavens, heavens, the, the work, work of your, your fingers, fingers, the moon, moon and, the and the stars, stars you, have you have set, set in, their in their courses. What is, what man, is man that you should, should be mindful, mindful of him? The son, son of man that you should, should seek him out. out. You, you have, have made him but a little lower, lower than, than the angels. angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whosoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. A reading from the letter up to the Hebrews, which we're studying on Wednesdays. <laughs> Just a little plug. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things. Through him, he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now, God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, where are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, 
now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. In Genesis this morning, we heard God say, it is not good for man to be alone. 
that man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was fine, found. Mark also follows suit by saying, but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be reunited with his wife. And the two will become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Now, I could go into a theological discussion as to whether Eve was created from Adam or from the ground, or whether the original human was created as both genders and later separated. There are as many different interpretations and opinions about our origins as there are stars in the sky. But the theme I heard from this week's reading is simply that man and woman, in all their varied groupings, were created as a beautiful way to meet a real human need. It is not good for anyone to be alone. We need other human beings like ourselves. Human beings, unlike our animal brothers and sisters, have the ability to transcend the physical and establish true emotional ties, which can in turn transform our lives. The creation of these ties is based upon learning, some sacrifice, and at times risk. We need to learn to share and give up a bit of ourselves. We need to accept the vulnerability that comes with close human contact. The closer we get to someone, the greater the risk of hurt and pain. When Adam named the animals, I think he began to understand the nature of each animal. In the Hebrew language, a name is viewed as equivalent to the person themselves. It signifies their worth, character, reputation, authority, and will. Adam sees that every animal has companionship with his own kind, and the companionship reflected before him is inadequate for his own needs. Adam is looking for something greater and deeper. When we understand and are willing to accept the work and sacrifice necessary for the establishment of deep human relationships, when we create relationships based upon mutual trust, dignity, and respect, we achieve the type of companionship that is unique to only humankind. Adam could have been the eternal Dr. Doolittle and spent eternity with the animals. And believe me, there are many days when I would prefer the company of animals to humans. But despite a garden full of four-legged and winged creatures, God believed Adam needed someone who shared a common body structure as well as someone who could communicate, who had similar interests and shared experiences. He needed the company of his own kind to thrive in paradise. Loneliness is still a theme ever present today. Our population may or may not be increasing, but intimacy within our species is not. We walk through grocery stores saying very little to those who are ahead or behind us in line. We walk or run the trails and look to the ground when another person passes instead of raising our heads to say hello. We live in neighborhoods where we don't even know those who may live on either side of us. We have a lack of intimacy within the church and the communities we reside in. Single persons who sit by themselves in church, work, or school. Young people who feel different and ostracized and fail to connect with an adult mentor or to hear a sermon that speaks to who they are. Divorced people who have gone through terrible pain, struggle, and feelings of guilt, often brought on by the message of Christian shame. People in difficult marriages who don't know what to do or how to leave or who to reach out to. Widows and widowers who have lost their spouse and struggle with loneliness and grief. People who are not accepted by their family, their church, or neighbors because of gender, color, or inability to fit into social norms. People with illnesses who cannot attend services because of a variety of reasons, especially COVID. We have lots of people who are lonely and who would like not to be lonely. When reading the Genesis passage, my mother came to mind. We lost my dad in January due to COVID-19. My father was the anchor of our family and such a stabilizing influence on my mother. We could not imagine one without the other. My mother, though, devastated by my father's loss, is, strive, is thriving. Why? Because she has family and friends she can lean on. Most in my family have taken what was a great loss and turned it into a positive by growing closer to each other. 
Mom has other widowed friends who call her for lunch. She has her crafting groups and her church community, which calls to check in on her whenever she is absent. All have been her foundation through these difficult times. But what about those people who do not have an intimate community or a, or a family or a church? How can we as members of St. Margaret's be less of a known entity and more of an intimate community? By reaching out to this need for intimacy within our own church walls and outside, we need to become a safe harbor for those who are lonely and in need of spiritual connection. God created us to need others. Being a part of a community meets many of our basic needs. The need to belong, to laugh, to be supported, joy, and the absence of loneliness. Many of us have friends at church and in clubs, political activities, and at work. But for many people today, work and social media are the primary place to meet and interact with people. Facebook and Match.com have replaced our next door neighbors and our church social groups. I'm aware of people who truly believe that those on Twitter are their only friends, and games and TikTok videos have become their only social community. How do we get these people off the network and into pews? St. Margaret's is such an important place in the lives of so many of us. Worship, adult study, crafters for hope, wow, Bible study, choir, vestry, altar guild, and many others. All these activities bind us together into relationships that are truly intimate and sustain us. How do we share what we have to offer with those who are searching and are lonely? We will never fully recover the beauty of Eden, the side of heaven, but we can seek Christ's help in restoring ourselves to the image of God in which I believe we were created. We can seek the company of Christ-like people in our lives and bring Christ to others who are in need. We must celebrate relationships before we encounter the God of relationship. We must make space for the otherness of other humans to be able to make space for the otherness of the divine. And we must give love before we can receive love. Like it shows in Genesis, relationships are where our humanity is born and grows, blooms and endures. It is by loving people that we learn to love God and feel the fullness of his love for us. When we make our financial pledge this year, may we also make a pledge to reach out to those who we sit with in church, as well as those in the grocery store, the lodge meeting, or the golf course. Let's wear our St. Margaret's t-shirt or cap when we go out casually. Utilize our church postcards by posting them on the community bulletin board, or writing a thank you note to our restaurant server, or including it with a birthday card to a friend that doesn't belong to a church. Let's invite someone to attend church with us because we know we have amazing things to offer and not be afraid someone might think that we are a church peddler. And let's advertise our services, book study topics, and events on our personal Facebook and Twitter pages. We need to let people know who we are and what we are doing. We need to shout it from the rooftops. We need to look out for one another, especially those who are lonely, by letting people into our lives and showing them we have something life-changing to offer. I want to, pardon me, I want to conclude with a Celtic prayer of confession that I think is rather appropriate. We want to serve you in this world. Be the ones through whom many will be drawn to the light. Show your love wherever there is a need for love to be shown. Be your touch where there are broken lives to be made whole. Speak your word in faith against those who deny your power. And yet we confess we hesitate to speak your name. We are daily tempted to listen to this world's voice. So we come again to your feet and in faith we proclaim, thanks be to God who forgives us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I invite a moment of silence. Let us stand and say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing the grace of Jesus Christ, we entrust our lives to God, saying, We are your children. Hear our prayer. God of creation, protect this earth from pollution and destruction. We pray especially for the victims of drought, fire, and rain. We are your children. Hear our our prayer. prayer. God of peace, deliver the nations from poverty and violence. We especially pray for our outreach ministries, Crafters for Hope, Sure, St. Wilfred's Food Pantry, and Ashton Elementary School. And we pray for Joseph, our president, and Ron, our governor, and those in the military, Miguel, Charles, Travis, Mike, Dennis, and Matt. We are your children. God of redemption, build up your church in faith and faithfulness. We pray especially for Carla, Ev, Richard, Dick, and Lisa, and Michael and Dabney. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for diocesan house, Day Spring Episcopal Center, Epiphany Cape Coral, Good Samaritan Clearwater, Good Shepherd Dunedin, LaBelle, Punta Gorda, and Venice, and our Bishop Coadjutor Search Committee. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in Wales. We are your children. God of healing, soothe the suffering with tenderness and strength. We pray especially for Emily, Chrissy, Anne, Jackie, Jan, Kimberly, Karen, Natasha, Myra, Zeke, Elizabeth, Al, Carol, Dick, Sarome, Shirley, Travis, Pam, Ed and Edie, Bobby, Heather, Edmund, and Kristen and Stuart. And for Jean, Claudia, Chris, Jamie, Crystal, Linda, and Melanie. We are your children. All this we ask in the name of the one who welcomes us as beloved children into the eternal glory of your realm, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us continue with our growing in our spirit prayer. Almighty Almighty and and ever-living God, God, source source of all wisdom wisdom and and understanding, understanding, be present present with us as we consider consider the renewal and and mission of our our congregation. congregation. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us by your Holy Spirit to perceive what is right, and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us share God's peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Hey, does, um, do people know where Carla is? I've got several comments yes. about where's Carla. Would you want me to do it? No, I'll do it. Okay. Peace. It's fun to be here. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with praise.
Let us stand. We have to take a little bypass for a minute. Are there any people with birthdays this morning? You got one, Rick? Your 31st? October 31st. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? And you, sir? Oh, cool. Let us, let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, upon your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. And this we pray through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, please be seated. How about anniversaries? Let's see. Oh, wow. You want to shout out your name? Who's, uh, who, I can't. Okay, and who's next? Marlon Natasha. Marlon Natasha. Okay, and you over here? Okay, let us pray. Oh God, you, uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep all of you who are celebrating your anniversaries. And may the Lord mercifully, with his favor, look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace, that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come, have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Finally, are there any of those who are getting ready to travel? <laughs> okay. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we may go. Preserve those who travel. Surround them, we pray, with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to your journey's end. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Please feel free to remain standing or to kneel. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and to die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. And all this we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. These are the gifts of God for you, the people. Sorry, are we not ready on this? Can I do it again? Yeah. Right These on. are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ died for and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Is that right? <laughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Just you going up? Or are you going up by yourself? Gotcha, gotcha. That is. <laughs> 
Let us pray. Let us say together. In the name of this congregation, we send you out bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread and one bread. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us sing together hymn 379. 